Welcome to this episode of Practical Dispersions. My name is Nicholas Tito from Vance and Virtus, working together with Professor Stephen Abbott. This is the first of two case studies where we examine how to use HSPIP for practical questions that come up in dispersion R&D. In this case study, we examine grafted polymers as a dispersant motif. And the goal is to illustrate how we can use HSPIP to find the minimal required graft density of polymers on the particle surfaces in order to prevent flocculation. To start, we actually need to take a detour to understand an important quantity which dictates how neutral particles interact when they're dispersed in neutral solution. This is called the interparticle potential. It's the energy of interaction between two particles based on how far apart they are. There are actually two contributions to this interparticle potential that we should consider. The first is the van der Waals interaction. As we discussed in an earlier episode, this is attractive and short-ranged. It's what causes the particles to cluster and potentially flocculate when they're not coated with polymers. The second contribution is from the polymers adsorbed to the particle surfaces. This interaction is the micropillow effect. It's repulsive because the polymers don't want to be intertwined. To get a clear sense of how this interparticle potential operates and why it serves as a good measure for understanding if flocculation will happen or not, we trace out the potential as we vary the distance between the two particles. When the particles are really far apart, there's zero interaction between them. That's the reference point, basically. If we bring the particles a bit closer together, we engage the polymer micropillows. It's repulsive, and so the value of the potential goes up. The van der Waals attraction is still very small at this point as it's primarily short-ranged. So here, the total interparticle potential is positive. If we bring the particles really close together, the polymer repulsion gets larger because there's more micropillowing, but the van der Waals is even stronger. It is attractive, meaning a negative value for the potential, and it normally wins out over the polymer repulsion at this very close distance. So here, the total interparticle potential is negative. All right, so if you look at the full shape of the curve we've traced out, we see that it has a positive repulsive hump at medium distance before it dives down to very strong negative or attractive values at short distance. This hump represents the effect of the micropillows in buffeting the two particles away from each other when they try to get cl too close. This is actually a crucial feature that we need to see in the interparticle potential to know that we've designed a dispersion where flocculation is minimized. Let's walk through how to compute this quantity in HSPIP using grafted polymer dispersants as an example. To make it interesting, we'll use this output to determine the minimum required density of grafted polymers on the particle surfaces in order to mitigate flocculation. The first step is to choose your polymer type. For this example, we choose grafted polymer. The second step is to set the polymer length and the polymer solvent chi parameter. Next, we set the characteristics and concentration of particles in the dispersion. And finally, we push the calculate button located in the interparticle calculation section at lower right. The result is a plot of the interparticle potential we've been talking about, which adds up both the polymer and the van der Waals contributions, plotted versus the distance between the two particles. The vertical axis here is in units of KT, which is thermal energy units. For reference, 1 kT is 1 unit of thermal energy at room temperature. So like in the illustrations earlier, at very far distance, the potential is zero. As you bring the particles closer together, the potential goes up. And in this particular formulation we've made, it goes up and keeps going up. This is actually because we chose a high polymer grafting density, resulting in a really big polymer corona and almost too much micropillowing. In fact, it's so big we can't even bring the two particles close enough together to see the van der Waals attraction at short distances. So, particles will be dispersed in this formulation, for sure, but we've probably used way more polymer than is necessary. So let's see if we can reduce the grafting density, but still mitigate flocculation. Here, we reduce the graphing density and we end up actually with the opposite extreme. You can see the interparticle potential has no hump, meaning that our polymer coronae are too small. There's insufficient micropillowing, and so we expect flocculation in this formulation. Okay, so this graphing density is too low, the other one was too high. 
If we bump up the graphing density a little bit from here, we can see we get a small bump in the interparticle potential. This is what we hoped for. This means that we're now in the regime where we can prevent flocculation because there's enough grafted polymers to micropillow. Hovering over the plot, we see that the size of the micropillow hump is around 50 kT, or 50 times room temperature energy. That's a big hump, but if we wanted to be on the safe side, we can increase the polymer grafting density a little bit more. And as shown here now, in this case, the bump is around 170 times room temperature energy. This is even better. And so this grafting density of the polymers will be even more effective at reducing flocculation. So let's recap. The purpose of this case study was to introduce the power of interparticle potential in HSPIP output that is really useful to determining if particles in a formulation will flocculate. Now, fundamentally, flocculation is mitigated when there is a clear ramp up leading to a hump as you decrease the distance between the two particles. This is the polymer micropillowing effect in action. This output makes HSPIP useful for quickly prototyping new designs or variations on your formulation. In this walkthrough, we looked at grafted polymers as dispersants, but the same approach can be used for any kind of polymer architecture and any kind of chemical design parameters you wished within the app. The cool thing about this is that this app lets you get really early guidance on where to pinpoint some of your laboratory efforts for new designs. You can sample a broad range of parameters, try some prototyping, and then isolate the most promising combinations of parameters before you begin work in the laboratory. So thanks a lot for your attention. Hopefully this was a informative case study and stay tuned. A second case study will follow this. Take care.